morning and buenos dias and welcome and bienvenidos. I am so excited to be here with you today and to be part of this really amazing welcoming committee, right? I'll begin with just a basic statement, which is that in the U.S., in our society, we believe in the value of education, right? We believe that education is power. We believe that education can change the world. We believe that education can change individuals' lives. We also believe that ultimately education is the key to success. And here at the Harvard Graduate School of Education, I would say that perhaps we believe this more than most. After all, we're all here to learn to change the world, right? We want education to be accessible for all, attainable for all, and high quality for all, okay? Here's where the however comes in. When we look at the data, we actually recognize that one of our gravest social inequalities is the ethnic, racial, academic achievement gap or the opportunity gap. And let's take a look at some of this data. We'll begin with just some basic demographics here. Here's the current ethnic racial breakdown of our society, of, our, of the US currently. And here's where we're gonna be in 25 years, in 2045, when whites will no longer be a numerical majority of the country. And when we look at where we are currently in our K through 12 um, public schools, we see that our nation's children have already crossed over in terms of this demographic projection. So we see that about 47% of our K-12 public school students are white, and a little over 43% of our public school students are black and Latinx. So when we're thinking about education being accessible, attainable, and high quality, we really need to be thinking about it being all of these things for all of our nation's youth, right? When we look at our data, again, I am a data person, so I'm constantly looking at the numbers. Um, and so when we look at our data, we see that that's not where we are. And in fact, we have a really long way to go. We have a really large task ahead of us. This is our high school um, dropout rates. This trickles down into our high school graduation rates, where again, we see our Latinx, black, American Indian youth lagging behind our white, their white and Asian American counterparts. Our college enrollment rates of 18 to 24 year olds also shows a similar picture. And this all trickles down to the degrees that are conferred on an annual basis. And so if you could look here, the top row is actually the proportion of the population for each ethnic racial group in the US of 18 to 24 year olds. And if we just take one example, we can look at Latinx students, they make up 22% of 18 to 24 year olds, yet they're only making up 10% of the master's degrees conferred in 2017, less than 8% of the doctorate degrees, so clearly a disproportionate representation relative to their proportion in the population. So in my work, I've really focused a great deal on trying to understand why do these uh, disparities exist? Why do we see these disparities? And how can we change them? So first, thinking about the why. I have focused a great deal on thinking about stress and the stressors that our young people face that then result in um, maladjustment, whether it's psychosocial adjustment, whether it's academic outcomes specifically. And decades of research has demonstrated from multiple disciplines that, in fact, stressors lead to maladjustment, right? I focus specifically on one particular type of stress that is unique to the experiences of our ethnic and racial minority youth. And that's their experiences with ethnic racial discrimination or ethnic racial based threats. And what we know from meta-analyses, from studies conducted around the, the country and actually around the world, is that ethnic racial discrimination experiences of um, ethnic and racial minority youth are pervasive. They're pervasive in the sense that we see these across ethnic and racial minority groups. They're pervasive in the sense that we see this across developmental periods from early childhood through young adulthood 
And they're also pervasive in that we see these in terms of multiple indicators of adjustment. The negative effects of ethnic racial discrimination are significant, and they're not just affecting mental health. They're not just affecting academic outcomes. They're affecting multiple indices of adjustment. And then finally, these experiences of ethnic racial discrimination are pervasive in that we see them across regions of the United States, and we see them with samples that are gathered from different regions, different states um, in the country, but also nationally representative samples. So then this begs the question, how? How can we disrupt these patterns? We know this is pervasive. We know that this exists. How can we make a difference here? Um, and really, there are going to be many different answers to this. And in fact, we're going to need a multi-pronged, multifaceted approach to really disrupt this pattern. In my work, I focus on one factor, one really specific factor that can help to contribute to disrupting this pattern. And this is where ethnic racial identity comes in. Ethnic racial identity development is a core developmental competency for young people. Um, the process of exploring this part of your background, the process of gaining a clearer sense of understanding of who you are with respect to your race and ethnicity, and the role that that plays in your life is a really important piece of developing an identity. It's an important part of just gaining a global um, identity cohesion for yourself. You know who you are, you're confident in these beliefs and these ideas, and all of this contributes to positive psychosocial functioning. And this is what we focus on in my lab. Now, decades of research conducted by my team, conducted by others across the nation, and conducted by my colleagues across the world has demonstrated that ethnic racial identity can serve as a protective factor for young people. Having this greater sense of understanding of who you are in this regard can actually buffer against the negative effects of discrimination on adjustment by providing coping skills and just by providing a greater sense of understanding. We also see that ethnic racial identity can serve a direct positive and promotive function for individual's adjustment just by giving them a sense of understanding of themselves that helps with their well-being. So ethnic racial identity is a core developmental competency. And as a result of this work, my students and I developed a curriculum focused on ethnic racial identity development. And so I'm going to tell you quickly about the Identity Project. Um, it is a curriculum that provides students with strategies, tools, and time with which to explore their ethnic racial background, learn about their peers' background, and also discuss issues of race and ethnicity in the school setting. It is designed as an eight-week program that's delivered once a week by a single instructor for about an hour every week, and it specifically targets adolescents' ability to explore their background. It gives them tools with which to do that, and through this curriculum, they gain a clearer sense of understanding of this part of themselves. We target middle adolescents particularly because individuals have the social and cognitive capabilities to be able to engage with and understand abstract concepts such as race, ethnicity, social systems. Um, now, in my lab, we've conducted an experimental study to examine the efficacy of this program, and we found that, in fact, we were able to increase adolescents' exploration and resolution of their ethnic racial identity after this eight-week program. And a year later, these positive effects on their ethnic racial identity had positive cascading effects on their grades, their self-esteem, their depressive symptoms, they had lower depressive symptoms, and their global identity cohesion. So really exciting experimental findings for this work. So currently in my lab here at the Harvard Graduate School of Education, we're actually in the process of partnering with schools in the greater Boston area to bring this curriculum into these communities. We're testing the feasibility and efficacy of this program with a younger cohort. So now we're going into eighth grade classrooms. We initially tested it with ninth graders. And we're refining and testing a teacher training program where we're actually preparing educators to engage in this work with their students. Because essentially we believe that by providing educators with these strategies and tools, we may be able to engage them in this process of a culturally sustaining pedagogy, which will positively impact their students' achievement. 
So we're engaged in this important work because we firmly believe that education is the most powerful weapon that we can use to change the world. And we believe that teachers and educators specifically are natural resources in this system that can really help to put us onto a different path than the one that we currently find ourselves. And I'm thrilled that you're here to be a part of this journey and I wish you a wonderful academic year. Thank you.